Hey, what's up? This is Conrad, GOG Boxing. This is part two of what I was talking about of the drill to, to help you get some power if you're not getting any. Now, some of you will go, oh, I got plenty of power. Some of you might, and you might not even feel this. When uh, I was a young guy, uh, I didn't really notice these things. Now, I'm, I'm not using a heavy bag because uh, I don't want to carry it around. You can tell that the white trash boxing shack is getting more and more crowded. I don't have a place to put it out here, so I, I'm not going to carry that heavy bag in and out all the time. And also the weather was tearing it up. But it doesn't really matter. You don't have to have a heavy bag. If I, were, if I had a fight coming up, if I was young again, then yeah, I'd put in some rounds on a heavy, heavy bag. But not as many as you think because you don't want, you, you know, your hands are important. You don't want to just completely tear them up. You'll notice very quickly while I put, this, put these on, I'm using these uh, WBC, these um, title gloves. They're not very expensive. I really love them. Uh, they're soft. Also, on my hands, they're great for sparring. I'm using them on the bag today. Um, I've had them for a while, and uh, they've held up. No cracking in the leather yet. Uh, I actually don't always put them on with my teeth, but I've got my microphone right here, and I'm trying to not pull it off. Now, what you will notice, what we talked about in part one, is if you were punching, bam, bam, I'm just going to show you in slow motion for a sec, right? If you were punching and you stand up onto your toe, I think you can see my toe, then the tendency is to stand up and your whole body twists and you, you would think you would get more power, but you start pushing, right? So that's if you're throwing that backhand. If you started, if you stand up like that, you see, I, one, I'm, I'm making myself vulnerable. Two, my whole body starts to twist, okay? The whole body starts to twist. If you sit down on your punches, and I don't mean like sit. I mean, that's where you, you see guys, Floyd Mayweather in a video, he's talking about it. So you don't have to take it just from me. Take it from somebody that was a great. Not just white trash gym rat. But when you twist and you keep, if you're having trouble, you keep that big toe up. So you're twisting on the ball of your foot like you're putting out a cigarette. Look what happens. I twist and I sink down and my, I don't know if you can see it, but my foot comes out, okay? What that does is that gets, that keeps, instead of wasting all this big energy, think about this. What can you move faster, your whole body like that or your hips? Bam. You move your hips and then the whole thing follows and your upper body movement stays tight, okay? Stays tight. It's like a top. If you twirl around like this or you see figure skaters, if they're spinning around like that, then they bring their arms in and they start going faster. It's the same type of thing. It's the same type of thing where you're getting your power, okay? Now, there may be some debate. Some guys will talk about throwing the backhand like you're throwing a pitch. That's not bad, except the tendency is that guys end up on their tippy toes and they rise up. I don't believe in that. Personally, I think, especially if you're having trouble getting power, again, you start getting into the whole wide body thing. Now, <coughs> again, I'm not totally warmed up, but I'm going to show you a little bit of the difference, but also the, when, when you're talking about your, your hook, okay? So look, here I am. I almost don't want to do it the wrong way because it develops bad habits, but I'm sold. Probably I'm not going to, you know, whatever. So here I am, and if I stand up, that even just feels weird doing it. But you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Look at my body, okay? I throw a punch, and now, well, I can't even, it feels weird to even do it. It's like I'm kind of throwing like that. I don't even know how I do it really like that. Now, if I twist on the ball of my foot, say I'm having trouble, I'm just gonna do this exercise, keep my toes up. Don't worry about it during a fight. If I'm doing the twist, and I'll start out like that, slow, bam, you see how much direct? That's very direct, because everything is in line. Everything is in line, bop. And when it's direct, you're gonna get more power. It's straight, right, it's straight. The other thing is, that twist means it's going toe or the ball of your foot to your knees, your hips, and then the last thing is, what? And, and your arm shooting out without trying to arm it, without trying to push it. So if I'm here, now I'm not warmed up at all. <laughs> if I'm here, bam, 
that's a good way to hurt my shoulder. I've had lots of shoulder problems. But if I'm out here, pop, okay? I didn't hardly move. You see my, my I, didn't, I didn't have to rear back. I didn't do anything. I'm just right here, pop. That's because of that ball of foot. Now, I'm also afraid I'm gonna throw this microphone off. I'm probably not twisting my foot even as much as I should, because again, bam. That's just not much movement, straight. So what this means, is when you're fighting, right, a guy moves, you don't have to, you slip a little bit, you don't have to, to load up in the sense like this. You slip, bam, and you've got that twist. I'm not even doing anything, I'm not even closing my fist right now, I'm just showing you where it's coming from the, the body. So, same thing, if I, it's tight, I'm not, it's just, and that's what that, and I'm just, just right now, and that makes you sit down on your punch, okay? Now, another thing to keep in mind, it's kind of the same thing, it's the same, you can do the same thing with your front foot. When you would see Mar, I mean, uh, Hearns throw hooks, he would twist, you know, there's a big debate, do I turn my foot or not on my hook? If some of the Mexican style guys be like, no, but like Canelo, Bam, he's not turning his foot. That's a, I, I kind of go back and forth. I kind of like not turning my foot. But you'd see Hearns turning that foot, but not on the toe, not on the toe. So let's say you slip something. You see how, how easy that went? That's because that's on the ball of that foot, okay? Now, I can throw a hook without turning my foot, without turning my foot, and I'm gonna have a little more weight forward when I do it and keep that, but it's still, the weight is on the ball of my foot. It's not on the heel, it's not on the toe, it's right on that ball. So, and it's a little bit, that was, I was exaggerating, so it's a little bit awkward. Let's say if I did, there you go. And I didn't turn my foot, but the weight was still on the ball. If you, but there's nothing wrong with turning that foot on the ball. So, if you're having trouble, with your power, you're not getting pop, okay, then probably you're getting up on your toe or you're doing something completely wrong, like you're maybe just doing your arm, okay? The other thing, look, it keeps you, it's, it's at the end of my punch, no matter where I am. Let's say that I'm just right here, okay? Real close, you're like, well, how's that the end of my punch? Well, because look, I turn on the ball of my foot, right here, and I'm still getting, it's like a three inch punch, pop three inch punch, pop, right there. Same thing if I if I was doing an uppercut, or I mean a short hook, sorry not uppercut, short hook, I can do it right on the ball, my, stay on the ball this front foot, pop, same thing. Because you're, that, that energy is grounded. It's grounded through the ball of your feet. Now, Tyson, I remember when I was a kid and Tyson was fighting, and they were talking about, you know, if he didn't jump when he punched, he would punch even harder. It's like, you know, thank the Lord he didn't because he probably would have literally taken somebody's head off and killed them. But there, the old timers, even on the like, on the HBO fights and stuff, they talk about, you know, he if he didn't jump so much, he would get more power. And that's probably true because he'd be grounded, grounded. But think, ball your feet. I know they say, stay on your toes, stay on your toes. But that's really the balls of your feet. The same thing works though. If you do that amateur in and out, which, I'm getting old and that's actually getting hard for me. Let's say in and out, in and out, in. So pop, pop, pop. That punch was still grounded, twisting that cigarette in there, twisting that cigarette on the ball of my foot. Now, last bit of advice. And what I'm gonna do right after this is I'm gonna just do a round, kind of in slow motion, because I'm afraid this mic's gonna fly out of my pocket. But I'm gonna talk you through like a four minute practice round, okay? of different things I'll do and try to be fundamentally sound while I'm talking, which I'm bad at, okay? When I'm talking, I just, I can't concentrate on two things at once for some reason. But one thing, this is kind of a, a Texas way of boxing that I always heard growing up. I heard this all the time growing up. It also gets to where you're gonna get your power and the loading up thing. You'll see lots of guys in fights like announcers saying he's loading up on every punch. You know what loading up really is? Loading up is not popping and hitting sharp, right? That's not it. Loading up is cocking back to try to get that. And you know what? When you load up like that, 
one, it's a sign that your probably your balance is off. Your boxing fundamentals should be a bit better. I'm not saying that every time you hear somebody's loading up that he doesn't have fundamentals, but it's not a great sign. The other thing, it wastes lots of energy because what you're doing is you're going, uh, loading up, uh, loading up, right? You're not going to get any pop on it. You're not going to get the power. Whatever your natural power level is, you're not going to get it. If you look at the guys in the 80s, whether you're talking Duran, whether you're talking Leonard, these guys, it was, you watch them, you're like, man, these guys are killing it with every punch. Fast combos, slow combos. Each punch looks like they're going to kill somebody with it, right? They're loading up. Well, yes and no. They're not loading up. They're just, they're, they're actually firing kinetically the right way, right? And so it's not sapping all their energy and they've got crazy power through a whole fight. Now, one way to test yourself, right? Sure, you can, there's different ways. You can do pity pat. You can like make your feet go and get little fast punches. You can do, you know, like that. But a way to test yourself is to think about firing off the off the foot where you have most more weight. Now I know that the, you know 70% on your back foot or 65% on your back foot, the rest on your front foot. Okay, okay. That's like when you're getting into a stance and it does help you move and everything. But when you're throwing punches, a good way to sort of sort out your mechanics is to think about punching off the foot where you have your weight. Now that includes when you're throwing combos. So let's say that I'm here and okay, yeah, my stance, I have a little bit more weight on my back foot, on the ball on my back foot. My heel's up right now. But when I do that jab, when I do that jab, my weight has shifted a tiny bit to that front foot before I throw it. And actually, I sink on my jab. I think it's, it's better you get more range. Same thing if I'm throwing from the back foot. Here I am. Now I've got a little more weight on my back foot anyway. But when I ground that cigarette, my weight's kind of more on my back foot. So pop, pop. When you start going bop and leaning forward and you're trying to throw with your weight on your front foot because you did that jab, then you start having terrible mechanics, no power or anything, right? So you can think about this, maybe slow it down a bit, right? So front, so front foot, weight back foot, weight on the front foot, but then sometimes if you want to, you can turn that front foot and sink to your back foot when you throw that. But you see what I mean? So my, I'm kind of my weight's coming from, my punch is coming from wherever I'm putting my weight. I'll give you, I'll show you something else which kind of proves that theory, okay? Some of these guys will, you, you know, the, the Gallup punch or the Roy Jones kind of, you know, uh, hook from, from a mile away with his lead hand. Try this, and you'll, you'll see where I'm, I'm going. You can't do that, but with your weight starting on your back foot, you just, you just it just feels crazy. You can't do it. One, you'll also get knocked out. The way that he did it is the weight's actually on the front foot. Bam! You can try that at home, and you can do that gallop step if you shift and you get that weight on the front foot. Bam! You can, you can make that, that leaping hook. Now, I'm not saying do the leaping hook, that's pretty risky if you get a guy that's quicker than you, but I know that sometimes guys want to practice these things. They're like, how come it doesn't work? It doesn't work. Well, it's because you're not putting your weight where your punch is coming from, okay? That's like an old, that's like something that I heard in the 80s back in Texas. Some guys may debate it, but when you practice it, if you're having trouble throwing combos and feeling that you've got the same balance, you should try it while doing maybe the toe exercise, which may seem a little weird. Maybe you don't want to do that. Like, don't exaggerate it. You, that's like on my heels. That's not even my toes. Just think about that lifting that big toe. Now, the last thing which I talked about in the vid, which you would see, uh, like Hearns and Leonard do like shoe shines on the bag, which is like looks like really bad mechanics. They're just, I mean, they're totally squared up. They're doing these shoe shines. And you're like, well, why would they do that? Well, one thing that does, and you can practice that, like maybe at home, lift that, make sure that toes are up so it's on the ball of your foot, and just do a round where you're just doing these shoe shines. And it may feel really weird at first, but one, man, you get a, a crazy workout. But what it does, that kind of just squared up shoe shine, actually Benavides will do that kind of stuff when he gets in on somebody. If you make sure that you're not getting up on your toes too much, and you're doing it from the ball of your feet, you will teach your body to, to twist and use these, these hips 
and get yourself loose when you if you see guys like you know i know there's kind of a british school of boxing or it seems that way where it's the hook's very mechanical dink dink i'm not down for that at all i think the hook can be loose and you can gradually tighten it up and bring it close to you i've seen leonard say the same thing and you can leonard you see him get on the bag and he's doing just with one hand not high just one hand low and man it's loose it's loose but his hips are loose and everything it's on the balls of his feet now again kind of more mexican school boxing a canelo school might be you know you get over you're not turning your foot but if you you get where you're used to that weight on the balls of your feet and firing from the from the weight of your foot in a way you may be surprised at how you feel about that so i'm gonna I'm going to try to keep this on and I'm going to do a four minute round and I'm going to go slow and show you some ideas and kind of t see if I can talk you through it while I'm doing it. Don't criticize my form too much because I really do have a hard time uh, <laughs> uh, doing this and talking to the camera and punching at the same time. But I'm going to give you some ideas of things you can work out on the back. You can tell I'm losing my voice too. Okay. So I'll be, I'm going to set the clock and then I'll be back. Okay, I tried to I tried to go through around and show stuff too, and my mic flew off about a hundred times, and so I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna do some, and I may have to smash it together. It's not exactly what I wanted to do, but anyway, there you go. Okay, I tried to do it uh, with the with the mic thing on. It just kept flying off, so I'm gonna have to do it differently than what I was saying. I'm gonna just go through. I'm gonna do one, and then I'll jump over here and tell you what it is and tell you what some things that you can work into your your rounds okay so now I'm just gonna go slow now a lot of times what I do is I start off really slow and I do like slow combos and I just think through what I'm doing but literally these might be just one, two, three, one, two, three, get over to then, you know, one, uppercut, two, I'm, I'm thinking about different combos. Now, let's say I've already done that, and I've already done the one, one, like the one, one, one with my jab, then a hook, and then a one, one. To, I do that a lot to work this side. I will say that when you start on the heavy bag, when you, get, when you just get out and you're warming up, start out, like I said, with these, these low, these low jabs because it's easy to be straight with your low jab if you start out just going high and you're not warmed up you'll lift your arm up you'll lift your shoulder up because you're you're not you're not ready just so you start out low low and then go high now i'm gonna it's kind of hard to do this way but here we go so i'm a little bit more warmed up uh let's just say start out with some jabs normally right so you might want to start out with a jab, jab back to your head. So, actually, I didn't do what I just told you, but okay. So, jab, touch your head, jab, touch your head, jab, touch your head, jab, touch your head, right? You'll find, you won't believe how quickly your arm gets tired when you do that. Then when you start getting looser and you're doing faster jabs, and you're not worried so much about it, but you're keeping, at least keep this hand on your face, right? Right? You'll... Man, suddenly I feel fast because you were making yourself do this. Fast, 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 touch your head. Especially if you're a high guard guy. High guard guy. So, jab, touch your head. Jab, touch your head. You're, when you do the jab, sink into it off your front foot. Sink down into it. Now, I'm not saying start out with all your weight on your front foot. I'm saying you're going to kind of feel it from that front foot. Okay? After you get that, then start, you know, maybe just do one, two. Good combo. One, two. Make sure you felt that. You felt that weight. You touched that. You, you put out that signal. Okay? Now, I'm exaggerating because what you want to do when you're working the heavy bag, one, two, do something. Get out, off the two, slip out to the side, maybe do another combo. Here's a few combos just in a row to think about. Just things to always do. Okay? So, a one, 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 two. You did, uh, didn't do a one, one, two, or did I? So one, one, two. I slipped out under, just automatically. You gotta do something. Now, a one, two, three. When you do the one, two, three, after that three, you slip to the side, slip to the side, maybe to do a body shot, or go under, do something, or 
if you can off that three jab out of it. So, right, when you get over to the body shot, go ahead and get over. Don't just go, don't go one, two, three, and then try to do that. One, two, three, get over. You're slipping. You need to take a tiny bit of time to do that. Then the body shot. So, same picture of the camera, I don't have anywhere to go. But let's say I did that body shot. Bam! I could do something. Don't just sit there and hope that you got them in the liver. I'm going to come over here for a sec, okay? So, let's, let's move. Let's move, okay? Now, let's talk about what happens if, if your last punch is your right. You could, you could slip out, slip out. When you slip out, think about moving from your stomach and your hip. Don't just try to, like, they say move inches. And I see guys trying to, they're trying to just move their head. You're going to have to move your body some. Later, maybe you can slip by inches, but you got to move your body some. So, one, two, slip, two, hook. Come under, okay? So, one, two, slip. Sorry, saw this. One, two, slip. Come under and step under. I would step under. So, slip, step under. I'll go ahead and have to throw, I had to throw another hook. You have to, once you get into that, do something after every punch, you want to throw something or you want to slip, okay? You can do the same thing. You could go one, two, under. And then from here, if you want to challenge yourself, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is where you get into the weight on the ball of your foot. One, two, if you bob down, and then you tried to, let's say you wanted to throw a jab next, right? This is a challenging type of thing to do. One, two, down, and you want to throw a jab, but if you have all the weight, of course, when you go down, if you end up with all the weight in your back foot, you can't throw the jab. So, one, two, down, that little bit of weight on that front foot to be able to launch that jab. So, say, you can still get a jab off it. If I was down too far here, so let's see. Sorry. <laughs> I can still get a jab out of it, a quick jab, it's not a lot on it. If when I go down, I, I actually am thinking a little bit of weight on that front foot. Okay? Let's talk about if we wanted to do uppercuts, okay? Uppercuts, back uppercut, weight on this back foot. Bam, front uppercut. Weight, or kind of bop, bop, weight on the front foot, okay? So, if I went, see how I'm shifting over? Bam, shifting over, weight on that front foot, okay? Don't, don't try to shift over here with the weight on the front foot and throw an uppercut. Look what's happening already. See? So, I think you can get the picture. I'm going to have to figure out a different way to do this. I want to go through a round with you, like a real real round on the bag four minutes but we're going to, have to clean this place out and it's not my stuff right it's not my stuff so anyway i'm going to tighten up that hook so that's all for today from gg boxing this is a little bit chaotic try it again that's all for today from gg boxing this was a little bit chaotic but i hope you got something out of it and you kind of feel what I'm talking about here. Ball of feet. Look how I can actually move. Yeah, I can get low. Toe, big toe up. Ball of my feet. Still getting low. No problem. No problem. Bam. Bam. You can't do that if you're if you're punching and getting on your toes. Get down here and try. Uh-oh. Can't move. Can't move. See what I mean? So that's all for part two from the White Trash Boxing Shack. Uh, the Love Shack. This is GOG Boxing signing out. Hope that helped you a little bit. Hope you can even hear me. Otherwise, talk to you soon and bye-bye.